thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak uh, today. First of all, what is a PET scan? Now, this is, here comes the science, positron emission tomography. It's a fancy scan, and what's so special about it is it uses radioactive sugars. And you may have seen these pictures of people's brains working, and you show someone a, a maths problem, one part of the brain lights up. Show them a photograph of a holiday, another part lights up. And those are PET scans that are looking at metabolism varying from minute to minute. And this is important for cancer because the most active areas of cancer will light up by a PET scan. And also uh, heart disease and brain diseases can show the same. So it gives a completely different picture to an X-ray or a CT scan, which is an X-ray in 3D. Now to get these scans, you need a special type of radioactive material, radioisotope of glucose, that's made off-site, in a cyclotron, or what we uh, scientists call an atom smasher. And that has to be delivered safely to the patients. So this is why it's so special. And the UK, through negligence for many years, only has half the number of scanners needed compared to the rest of Europe to use this important technique. So as a quick fix, the government wants to have these portable scanners rather than actually providing a proper service. So doctors who use it have to have a special license known as an RSAC license. It's a criminal activity to give this radioactivity without a license. So the person who's giving this has taken on criminal responsibility. And you have to have that to give it. Now, actually, in health, do not have anyone with an RSAC license to, to do that. So they actually can't give anything at the moment. Uh, now, the old scanners that they are going to use, the new but old, use cathode rays. Remember the TVs that we used to have that big? That's cathode ray. So they run on cathode rays. And you know your new CD, your new TV, LCD, flat screen? That's what the new ones run on. So we're comparing LCDs with cathode ray tubes. That's true. That's the exact difference. So why would you want to use a cathode ray tube when you could have an LCD? Okay. Uh, now, with the CT scan, it's an X-ray. And sometimes you want to inject an extra contrast agent, as it's called, to show up the CT scan better for the liver, for example. That may be, decision may be made by a specialist doctor who's available in Oxford, but not at the other sites. Now, you can get allergic reactions to this. So it's essential that you have a crash team available. And that's what's available in Oxford. Now, the Oxford scans are more accurate. Uh, you can use them to plan radiotherapy. You'll be aware of how accurate radiotherapy has to be, not to damage normal tissues. So you can use the PET CT in Oxford, but because the ones outside Oxford are not that accurate, you cannot use them. Now, the doctors here work in specialised teams, as they do everywhere else in, in Oxfordshire and uh, Thames Valley, with the consultant oncologists, radiotherapy, medical oncology, geneticists, surgeons, counsellors, nurse specialists, and particularly importantly, also students. They meet every week or twice a week to discuss every patient and they have the scans available and the scan doctors to talk about it. You won't get that with in health. They can only provide a written report. But we know there's several very famous people in Oxford who report these scans who are very experienced. So far, in health have not been able to tell us who's going to report the scans, if they're in England, Oxford, or abroad, their qualifications, how good they are. All doctors are not the same. If we're going to make decisions on people's lives and management, we need to know who the doctors are. Now this new scanner I told you uh, should have been installed last year, but it was delayed by a year because of all this fuss with NHS England. So 400 patients who could have had a state-of-the-art scan have been denied it. So that's another problem that has to be dealt with. Now, Oxford's famous for its research, and although this is about giving good service to patients, research is critical to improve care. Cancer Research UK, Medical Research Council, and other research organisations give over two or three million pounds a year for PET scanning because it's state of the art to see how your cancer is, your brain, your heart. And as a result, many patients who have the PET scans are actually able to go into trials of new drugs. All that would go away if you, don't, if you have any health. We have more staff than we should have based on simple NHS service because the research funds the extra staff, the doctors, the nurses. All that would go away. So a recent example of how important these PET scans are is in the work that's done on research in prostate cancer in Oxford. And there's a new scan agent for PET scans, and it changed the management in 40% of cases. So if you had the PET scan in Oxford, you have, management was changing 40%, either less or more treatment. So do you want your PET scan done in a car park, or do you want an Oxford scan with a LCD screen? So this is the sort of thing that will not be delivered by in-health. I mentioned to you at the very beginning that you have to have an RSAC license to give this. It's a criminal act if you don't do it properly. You have to make sure everything's working properly. And, of course, uh, no consultant would actually agree to work within health to follow up their machines when they had one that's so much better. And also, they don't have anyone that's properly organised or trained as far as we know. 
So he refused to allow his RSAC licence to be given to InHealth, and as a result of that, rather than the trust saying, well, that's the law, they got a legal team to investigate if they could bypass him. So how bad is that behaviour to get a legal team to see if you can bypass the law of the land and try and go round this problem of criminal responsibility? Now, the doctors who do the scans did the costings for the trust, because they know how much it costs. And they know from their colleagues uh, in the teaching hospitals in London and elsewhere, where there's another product company called Alliance, that the price they put in is exactly the same as those. So there's no way that they could have been undercut. That was the proper going price. Uh, they gave that price to the trust, but they've never been able to see what the trust bid was. They've asked, what did you bid? What did you say? They won't be told. Why won't the trust tell them what they bid? Why won't they tell them? So we don't know whether that bid was the correct one that was put in, or the trust changed it in some way. And then, of course, you all know already that the NHS England sent a letter from lawyers to the trust threatening to sue if anyone raised objections about their ethical standards and behaviour. Of course, uh, this was uh, wrong because you can't actually sue uh, a, a trust, I don't think, or the NHS England, but we'll talk more about that later. Now, I've got a letter in front of me, an email, which is the latest pressure from NHS England from the 7th of June, from Cathy Edwards, and she makes several points that there are delays in the scans in Oxford, and that therefore you have to have in help because you've got delays. On the same day that the letter came in, the people concerned said, that's not true. We had delays because the radioactive isotopes didn't come. I told you about the atom smasher, they have to deliver that. Very complicated machine, a cyclotron. So it didn't work, so a lot of other centres didn't have their isotopes either. But they used an excuse when that's not true to try and force a change. A letter was written to Bruno the same day, asking to acknowledge this correction and to pass it to Cathy Edwards, and two weeks later, no reply from Bruno, no reply from Cathy Edwards. So there's a problem there. She also complains about the time taken to organise pathways for improved care within health involved. How can it be improved by putting in this inadequate service as a, in between? So the whole letter is based on incorrect data to force an issue and allow in health to come in and disrupt an outstanding service. And now further information about the behaviour of NHS England to use legal means to force through unacceptable contracts through colleagues working for the Thames Valley Cancer Network and the Cancer Commission Group, who actually organised the payments and agreements for contracts. And they both were told, or several of them were told, that the process was under legal review, they could not object to it. But it wasn't under legal review, but they were told that and couldn't do it. Matt Hancock dropped the case we took to him because NHS England basically lied and still said there were still open discussions going on. If there were still open discussions going on, fair enough, he's not going to inquire. But there weren't any open discussions. Nick Talbot, who runs the clinical side, has walked away. The trust board do not want to do what Bruno says, and the RSEC licence will not be available. So how can there be ongoing discussions? But that's what they were told. I've got one other letter to talk about. We pointed out that the mobile scanners were rubbish compared to what's available. He said it's not true. They're just as good as the permanent scanners. Well, I've told you the facts. We can send in the brochures. He can come and talk to the consultants. The consultants have actually volunteered. Come and speak to us. You're in charge of procuring services for England. Why don't you come and talk to us? Rather than say, we're not saying the truth, when actually it's 100% true that one is better than the other. That's his latest letter, 17th. This would result in no service change for the residents of Oxfordshire and improve access across the Thames Valley. Well, it depends what you mean by no service change. Do you mean a worse service? I think you get a worse service in Oxfordshire, so there's definitely a worse service. And improve access to what? We get there, outside of Oxfordshire, there is access to the best available in the UK and in Europe. So how can they get the improved access? There may be parking's easier, but what about the rest of it? That's what improved access to me means. Quality of care, quality of uh, treatment, and quality of diagnosis. So that's correct. And then really, this is really an eye-opener. I would mentioned to you about uh, the dangers of scanning and having to have a rest team. Well, it's rare. Uh, you need to have an arrest team experience. He says, scanning services need to be delivered by staff we would like to support qualifications. They need to be, but well, we know that, we told them. Nothing said how he's going to do it. We're telling us what we know, he needs to. With support from on site resuscitation teams and or doctors. Would you like to be resuscitated by an or doctor or an and doctor? <laughs> now, if it's not a cardiologist and they may have done it once in their lives, as opposed to someone who does it three or four times a day. So I would say, for him to tell us we can have an or doctor, it just shows how poor the service could be and what you're letting yourself in for. So, <laughs> this is another, the final comment before I just say, I finish. Uh, NHS England's legal advisers were merely intending to alert the trust through the potential of other parties, including expert clinicians, 
who have involved in the valuation of bids to seek redress finding a substantial allegations made publicly. Does anyone know what that means? Well, I think it means that if the doctors decided to sue themselves because they didn't believe what they said, then they could be sued, but don't worry, you can't be sued. So that makes it very clear, doesn't it? So I think this is a sort of type of threat that are being made uh, by NHS England to the staff, rather than just simply answering their questions. Now, there's one thing, of course, that we have to recognise, that, you know, we all know how great the parking is in Oxford. I have to say, we have to ask the patients outside Oxford, would you like a scan that would change your management for 40% cases? Would you like to be scanned by a cathode ray tube or an LCD? Uh, would you want to have something that could change your life and how you're treated? And would you be prepared to travel one hour and park for an hour to get that? And if you would, then you should be helping support this uh, approach. But very important issues here, apart from the basic logic of it all, is NHS England have told the, not told the truth, they've put legal pressure on doctors, they don't reply to emails, when correct things, they don't respond. And I think they're, they're all the Bruno, and they're not taking through what the doctors say, what the trust wants to do, <coughs> passing on messages is very worrying to me. And so we have to have an open access, well how can we have an explanation, well, not only just from the NHS England, but from the local trust leaders as to why they're behaving that way. So I'm going to stop at that point, and happy to answer questions later.